Hello all. So in this lecture, we'll see about recursive functions. So we'll see what is a recursion. So recursion, it's a way of programming or coding a problem. So recursive function means it that function calls itself one or more times in its body. So this is an example for recursive function. We have a function called recurse. What it does is inside the function itself, it will be calling itself. So recurse is inside this function. So this is this recurse is outside the function. It is in the main function. So we are calling this recurse function, and this when this gets executed inside this function again, we have a recursive call. So what it does is it calls again this function, and it continues goes on repeating like this until there is an exit condition. So this is known as recursive function. So the function calls itself one or more times inside its body. So that's important. The function is function call is inside its body itself. Okay. So we'll see some examples of this recursion. First one is uh, to find the factorial. We have already seen how to find the factorial of a number. So using recursion, we can find the factorial of a number. So this is a function. Uh, we have factorial. Uh, the name of a function is factorial and we are passing one parameter n and this is a function if n equal to 1 we really know that we have to return 1 else what it does is it will return n into again we have a recursive call here factorial of n minus 1 so this is a recursive function I will explain that recursive function here the input number equal to 3 and we call this function this is the main part of the program print the factorial of number is factorial and we are calling this function factorial of number 3 so if we run this program we can see that factorial of 3 is 6 okay so we have given number as 3 and the factorial of 3 so what is this is it substitute with this factorial of 3 and so n will become 3 so that is what is written here factorial of 3 this is a first call with 3 then inside the function it will check whether n equal to 1 now the n value is 3 so 3 not equal to 1 so it will uh, execute this else part in the else part what it does is it does uh, uh, 3 into factorial of n minus 1 so factorial of 3 minus 1 it is factorial of 2 so 3 into factorial of 2 so this is what it happens inside this return statement 3 into factorial of 2. So what it does, it again calls this function using factorial and the n value is 2 now. Now it will again check whether n equal to 1. So it is not equal to 1. So it will execute the else part. It will be 2 into factorial of 2 minus 1. It is factorial of 1. So this is the third call. So it becomes, the expression becomes 3 into 2 into factorial of 1. So again it will call this function factorial of 1. So it will check whether n equal to 1. Now n equal to 1. So it will return 1. So it will return to this function. So the it will become 1 value. Then again it will return from the uh, next call. So it will return from the second call and it will be 3 into 2 will be there. That is 1 into 2 will be done and the result will be 2 will be returned. And again after that the return from the second call will be made so 2 into 3 will be done and 6 finally 6 will be output so the third call after that 6 will be returned to the function main function and we get the output as 6 so is it is recursion so this is known as recursion so the same function is called inside the body itself inside the function body itself it is recursively calling so this is this way we can execute this recursive function so for first is factorial of 3 is this call after that again inside the body it it uh, this statement is executed 3 into factorial of 3. so it is again another function call so uh, what happens is this uh, this will happen 2 into factorial of 1 so what happens is 2 into it will become 2 into 1 so it will return this 1 and it will return this 2 into 1 2 then after that it will return 3 into 2 6 
So and this six will be returned here. So this is known as recursive function. Okay. I will see, uh, show another example for to print this Fib, uh, Fibonacci series. So we have already seen how to print this Fibonacci series. So now we'll see how to use recursion. So this is the function. So here we first enter a number of terms in uh, how many terms and that will be converted to integer. If number of terms less than or equal to zero, we know that we have to print, please enter a positive integer. Else print, we will print Fibonacci, Fibonacci uh, sequence. And for i in range n terms, we will just simply call this recursive function. Okay. So what is this recursive function do is, so this is the body of that recursive function. So if n less than or equal to 1, it will simply return n. Else, what it does is, it will return recursive fib n minus 1. So we know that Fibonacci series, we have to add the previous two numbers. So this is a recursive function called recursive fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2. So this is again a function called n minus 1. So if you are giving 10 as input, so if the number of terms is 10, in the function first function call, we will sub give as uh, 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 10. So what it does is uh, it will be 10 minus okay uh, 10 minus 9. Oh, sorry, 10 minus 1 it is 9 and it is, this will be 8. So when it recursively calls, so repeatedly it will be calling this and finally when it becomes 0 and 1, those two numbers will be added and returned. After that, uh, 1 plus 1 will be added. 2 then after that 1 plus 2 will be added like that it will go on like this. So this is known as recursive function. Okay. So I have another one more example to find the sum. Sum of n natural numbers. So we are taking an input from the user and a number. If number less than 0 we have to end a positive number. Otherwise we will call a recursive function. So if we are giving 10 then it will add 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 10. So that is a function here, this recursive sum. So what it does is, if n less than or equal to 1, it simply returns 1, n value. Else, it will return n plus recursive sum of n minus 1. So if you are giving 10, then n, is, n value is 10 here. So it will return 10 plus recursive sum of n minus 1 it is 9 so it is again calling this function with 9 value again it will check so it will be 10 plus 9 after that 10 plus 9 plus 8 after that 10 plus 9 plus up to 1 then it will add 1 plus 2 3 like that it will go come in the reverse order so this is called recursive function so in recursive function the function calls itself inside the body one or many times So this is what happens in the factorial problem. So we will see this uh, if we are giving other factorial of 3. So this is a main function. So if we are giving factorial of 3. So this is a main function. It will call this function n. Uh, 3 uh, n value will be 3. It will check whether n equal to 1. It is not true. So it will come here. So it will return 3 into factorial of n minus 1. It is 2. So it is again a function call. Again, it will call this function. Now the n value is 2. It will check whether n equal to 1. It is not true. So it will go here, return 2 into factorial of n minus 1. It is 1. So again, it is a function call. It is a function call. So it will again call this function. So now the n value is 1. If n equal to 1, then it, we have to return 1. So now the n value is 1. So it will that 1 will be returned to this function. Okay. Now n is 2 and 2 into 1 it is 2 so this 2 into 1 2 will be returned to this function now the value of this factorial n minus 1 is 2 and n is 3 3 into 2 it is 6 so this 6 will be returned here so in this way we will execute this factorial problem okay so what are the advantages of recursion so it makes the code look clean and elegant a complex task can be broken down into simpler subproblems using recursion. 
Another advantage is sequence generation is easier with recursion than using some nested iteration. So iterations are difficult if you can if you want some sequence generation type of problems. So the disadvantages of recursion sometimes the logic behind recursion is hard to follow. Then recursive calls are expensive because it takes up lot of memory and time also. And recursive functions are hard to debug. If some error occurs, it will be very hard to debug these recursive functions. So these are the disadvantages of recursion. So I have a few exercises here uh, based on these functions we have studied. First exercise is write a Python function to check whether a number is in a given range. So we have to check whether if we give some number we have to check whether it is in the given range so if you are specifying a number from 1 to 50 and if you are giving some input number 25 we have to check whether 25 is within that range second function is write a python function that accepts a string and calculates the number of uppercase letters and lowercase letters in that string so you can use is upper and is lower methods that we have studied in the previous lectures then we have another exercise, uh, write a Python function that takes a number as a parameter and check the number is prime or not. So using function, we have to use function here. Earlier we have done the same program without using function. Now we have to use function and do the same program. And another program is there, write a Python function to check whether a number is perfect or not. So this is taken from Wikipedia, what, uh, what do you mean by the number? A perfect number. So in number theory, a perfect number is a positive integer that is equal to the sum of its positive divisors. That is the sum of its positive divisors excluding the number itself. Or equivalently, a perfect number is a number that is half the sum of its all of its positive divisors including itself. So 6 is a perfect number. 6 means the divisors are 1, 2 and 3. So if we take the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3, it is equal to 6. This is the first case. Or we can check whether 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus, including this number 6, equals to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6 divided by 2, it is equal to 6 or not. Then also it is a perfect number. Uh, second perfect number is 28. 28 is, uh, 28 divisors are 1, 2, 4, 7 and 14. So if you take the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14, it is 28. And if you take the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14 plus 28 by 2, we will get the sum uh, by 2 as 28. It is 56 by 2, it is 28. So this is how to check a perfect number. Then as the exercise is there, write a Python function that checks whether a pass string is palindrome or not. Palindrome means if you reverse the uh, order also, it will be same. So, for example, Malayalam is a palindrome word. Okay. Then write a Python function to calculate the factorial of a number using recursion. So, we know how to find, we have already seen this example. You try to, to do this using this function, using recursion. Then write a Python function to print the Fibonacci series using recursion. This also we have seen in the video. So these are the references. Thank you.